Hello and welcome to the virtual opening of the 2020 Art East Open Studio Tour. I'm Lana Kelly and I'll be your host today to introduce you to some of the Art East artists. After the virtual opening, you're invited to visit our September group show at the Lifa Art Gallery in Pauling, New York. Open Studio dates, Open Studio tour dates are October 17 and 18 and 24 and 25. And um, with some questions remaining about a live tour versus an online experience. You can visit our website, artistduchess.com, to see work from all the artist artists, more from today's presenting artists, along with updates and info on which artists are hosting live open studios and who is sitting out the studio tour this year. So let's get started. First up, we're going to be talking to photographer Lori Adams, and um, Lori's always finding a fresh way to look at the world through her photography. Hi, Lori. Hi, Lana. It's good to be here. Good to see you. Tell us what you've been doing lately. Well, uh, the point of me creating images is to get ideas about joy, anger, beauty, and frustration sorted out through composition, color, and tonality. I use technical knowledge of light and lenses, sometimes knowledge of subject matter. And when I am at my best, I approach making photographs with curiosity on how things will work and wonder what I will learn. I'm processing two main subject matters now. One is contemporary studies of flowers and food in the style of Netherlandish painting from the 16 and 1700s. The other is portraits of grain elevators and other agricultural and industrial architecture. On the surface, they may seem very different, but underneath they both stem from long-term interest in practical things of beauty, how things work and their usefulness. I am learning and enjoying it lots. Right. Thanks, Lori. I know people are gonna really enjoy those Netherlandish prints. I've been enjoying seeing them. Thank okay, you. next up we have Susan Borez. Susan is a photographer and jewelry maker, and she's going to talk about um, one of the things that she does is metal prints, and she's going to talk about leaves of a lifetime. Hi, Susan. Hi, Lana. Hello, everyone. Um, the uh, print that Lana mentioned is over my shoulder here. Um, while both uh, my jewels and prints will be available during Art East 2020. Um, I'm just going to touch on um, the print and uh, shed a little light on my creative path. So uh, one of the reasons um, nature uh, essentially um, inspired me to take the shot, specifically uh, the vibrant uh, pops of color, uh, the varied leaf sizes and shapes, and the many layers. Uh, additionally, uh, I have a deep connection, deep family connection, I should say, to the um, location uh, depicted. And I was very cognizant of this while I was shooting. I had uh, notions of a uh, family tree, uh, tree of life come to mind. Um, and what uh, I chose, this image to print, um, partly because uh, what I saw later when I looked at it. I saw abstracted foliage with the sun shining through and perhaps even um, uh, stars with moon aglow. So I'm often drawn to images that can be seen in different ways and thus keep giving. Um, and this piece will be on view at Live for Art Gallery falling during September. And I hope you stop in to see the show. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. There's a lot of complexity in that photograph. And it'll be interesting because when your viewer will add their own interpretation too. Um, right. Margie Davis is new with Art East this year. She joined us to do the Open Studio Tour. And um, Margie creates sculptures with found wood and natural materials. Hi, Margie. I come from a dance movement background. And after raising my children in Manhattan, we moved to, up to Patterson. Um, and I, we, we acquired a beautiful three and a half year old Ibizan hound with whom I 
took great hikes. And as I walked, I became intrigued and picked up pieces of wood and other findings from the forest floor that caught my eye, either because of the shape or the color or the texture or movement of the pieces. Um, one piece would inspire me and from that I would build a sculpture. Um, th this is one and this is this here is one that uh, that you'll see a picture of. This is a piece of birch bark. This is a nest that fell on the ground after a storm. The eggs in there are acorns. And uh, it's like being in kindergarten again. And I love it. And uh, I'm very happy to be part of Art East this year. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Margie. Thanks for telling us about your work. Um, next up is George Davison, and George is a ceramic artist that you, and he uses alternative firing methods to create his pieces. Hi, George. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Hi, Lana. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> My name is George Davison, and I'm a potter. I'm also a ceramic sculptor. I make a lot of work um, using alternative firing techniques. Um, by alternative, it simply means I don't use a kill and fire the piece entirely in the kill. When the pieces reach temperature and the glaze is melted about 1900 degrees, I pull them out when they're molten hot and I drop them in a, a barrel, a burn barrel with combustible materials like straw, shaved wood and that sort of thing. And what happens is it allows me to sort of more or less paint with fire. It allows the, the clay body to change color, um, and it's really kind of an interactive process. So I don't just sit and wait for the kill to cool. Uh, I suppose I'm a bit impatient that way. Um, my most recent work is a series, I, I call them totems. They're made out of carved clay tubes. Um, they range anywhere from four feet to seven feet tall. Um, I'm really excited about them. Um, most of my work is inspired by um, indigenous art, um, folk art, uh, specifically Japanese Haniwa figures, um, and also Native American art. Uh, so if you'd like to see my totem, I will be exhibiting one of them at the Live for Art Gallery in Pauling in the month of September. So thanks everybody and thanks for listening. Great, great. thank you, George. I'll be looking forward to seeing your, uh, your totem at uh, Live for Art. Next up is Susan Henley splits her time between the ocean and her farm and will be telling you about the different mediums she works with and her favorite, which is watercolor. Um, I am a watercolor painter, as you say, um, and I am living on a farm in Dover in New York, and I, I spend a lot of time at the Jersey Shore as well. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm doing a series of paintings um, at the, the beach and, and uh, at the bay to uh, get ready for a, a national plein air event at Long Beach Island Foundation. I'm very excited about that. Um, but uh, because I have watercolor, I, I approach it uh, differently than uh, I would acrylic or oil. Um, uh, and, and it doesn't matter quite what I paint, it's, it's how I paint it um, and how I approach the, the whole thing. It's the light that really prompts me to capture the moment that, that I see um, that I want to share with you. Um, like seeing a sunset from my, my de deck or the color way that the water changes depending on the clouds of, of the sky and, and the color of the sky. Um, even long shadows that are cast from my big maple outside um, in the afternoon. All of these bits of light uh, really excite me and uh, I need to paint it. Even um, taking an old photo, that, that it means a lot to me. And um, I think the way I feel it, it is brought out in the painting itself. Um, watercolor is spontaneous. Um, sometimes I have to make a sketch of, uh, and it does help to kind of get prepared and then you can just sort of uh, 
uh, uh, I mix the colors very quickly and and um, uh, the um, the brush stroke is important. Uh, it creates a, a shape, um, light and uh, and darks, um, um, heavy brush or light stroke. It it depends, but it's it's it's. I try to get a, um, a very quick um, economy of line, not any extras. Um, so um, that's what I. I've, and how I'm painting, and I'd like to share it with you. That's great. Thanks, Sue, for telling us about that. Um, one of the things that, that you mentioned, which really resonates with me, is the light that, that we're all looking for as photographers, as painters, um, to try to capture that, that wonderful light, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Carol Lee Cantor. Carolee is going to talk a little bit about how she paints her life experiences and is going to discuss the um, inspiration for one of her paintings. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Lana. Um, I paint a variety of subjects, primarily, primarily in oils, from life's experience, observations, and my personal feelings and impressions. The painting Walk, which is here behind me, Walk, um, uh, was created in a, first created in a class at the Putnam Arts Council, and it was inspired by a concept to combine elements of movement, spatial relationships, design, and color, influenced by a combination of the Impressionist and abstract painters, Picasso and Rothko, and my sculptor husband, Joe Cantor. Walk celebrates our unique gifts of individuality, motion, and endurance as we navigate through life. <clears throat> I've also, um, for the Lip Art um, exhibit, I have another uh, painting, which I just completed. And that painting is, um, is called um, Waiting to Launch. And it's, it's part of the Croton Reservoir, boats waiting on the Croton R Reservoir. And that will be in the Lip Art Gallery. Uh, and that's also here as well. Um, if you'd like to contact me, I'm at jccantor5 at gmail.com. But for further information about WALK, waiting to launch, and additional uh, and any uh, other of my paintings, um, please go to the Art Duchess, uh, arteastduchess.com website. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. I feel like in that WALK painting that, that person that could just walk right out of there. It's, there's so much movement in it. Um, I'm going to talk to Karen Madden next. Um, Karen Madden's artistry has embraced fiber and more recently fire. So Karen, what do you have to say about your new work? Hi, Lana. Thank you. Uh, yes, as, as you mentioned, I worked a lot with fiber in the past and um, I've moved on to something a little bit more physical and that's working with steel or metal. One of the things I enjoy is cutting, bending, and welding it all back together again in some art form, abstract uh, sculpture. It's a very physical form of, of, of art in its requirements of tooling, which is one of the reasons I really enjoy working with, with the metal. Uh, I get totally involved with the metal. I feel empowered after I finish a piece, I feel empowered to get back and do another piece because it just is so totally physically and mentally involved. Um, most of my work is with steel. So when I'm working with it, it's pretty gray and dull, so I like to add color to it, a pop of color using powder coating, which also provides weather protection. So most of my pieces are, can be sitting outside at any time. Um, during the open studio tour next to my uh, metal studio, I will have a metal sculpture garden so you'll, visitors will be able to walk around the sculptures that I have and get a much closer look to the techniques that I use and the bending that I do with the metal, something that I really enjoy. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, Karen. Um, I love how you pointed out how you're empowered by doing it. 
And, and I think that as artists, we're all empowered by the work that we do and, and the, the great satisfaction we get out of it. Doreen O'Connor is next, and Doreen's landscapes of the Hudson Valley are often painted in plein air while she's on site. And um, she has some humorous comments on, on some of the things that happen to her while she's out there. Hi, Doreen. Hello, um, I'm Doreen O'Connor. Um, I'm in my studio today, a little corner of it. But as Alana says, most of my work is done on air, outside in the nature that inspires me. Um, the light is always different than it is inside in a studio. Um, you hear the birds or you don't hear the birds. You have the wind, um, the various odors that come by. Um, it can be very changing. Um, it can be hot, sticky. In the case of the painting that's here behind me of, a, of an old rusting uh, grain harvester combine, I started that on, on a bright blue sky day very early this spring um, and was caught in a snow squall. Um, the painting on the other side of me was done in a swamp and Patterson in the Great Swamp and there I was fighting off mosquitoes. So um, my plein air bag has everything from bug spray to extra clothing, um, but that's what makes it so challenging and because um, you never know which, where you're gonna go. Mm. Um, I've been a member of Art East Open Studio Tours uh, eight or nine years now. And um, I've really enjoyed the interaction with the other artists you always learn from your colleagues. Um, I'm a painter, but I've learned things from Bill about video and things, or from Lana with her uh, photography and, and that kind of thing. Um, also the discussions you have with the visitors who come to the, the studios. Um, they often see something in a work that you didn't know was there um, and might inspire you to do something else. So I hope everybody um, keeps an eye on what we're gonna do in this year of uncertainty and um, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Jean Plekin also enjoys planting in plein air, local landscapes, and she's gonna tell you about a particular painting, a view from her dentist's office. Hi, Jean. Hi, Lana. Happy to be here. Um, and thank you, Doreen, for mentioning all the hardships of plein air painters, because um, I'm going to try to one-ups you on this story. <laughs> um, I'm Jean Plekon, and I paint local landscapes in oil, mostly out of doors in front of the scene. I also do house portraits by commission. Visit the Art East website to get the link to my website for more of my paintings. For the kickoff show, I selected my painting of the view from my dentist's office. On three extremely cold November days, I set up my outdoor easel and worked until my fingers froze. I took a break and a little coffee, warmed up, and I went back to work and did this repeatedly during the course of the three days. It was after most of the leaves had changed or changed and fallen and the forest floor opened up. The daylight could filter all the way to the forest floor. It gave a lot of color to the scene. The skeleton of the forest uh, provided the structure of the painting and the stream provided some interest. This work became a study. Um, once I overcame the um, environmental issues, I could submerge myself in studying the colors. And uh, I was uh, swimming in yellows and golds, ochres, uh, greens and blues, and uh, the beautiful earthy brown and umbers that uh, the fallen leaves in the creek bottom create. And the blue sky reached all the way to the bottom of the painting onto the creek surface and reflected the light. A week later, a black bear discovered the stash of bird food that the dentist keeps in his uh, backyard to feed the birds that entertain his clients. I'm glad I could finish my painting before I met up with the visiting bear. I hope you'll stop by the Live for Art Gallery in Pauling and see the painting in person and all the other wonderful work of the Art East group. Thank you. 
Right. Thank you, Jean. That that would be pretty astounding if you had accounted the bear when you were doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so next up is Bill Prickett. And um, Bill's photography work fully embraces technology, iPhoneography, and digital mediums that radically change the objects of persons that he photographs. Hey, Bill. So this is my studio. I've got printers, scanners, and I do my own custom framing, et cetera, et cetera. Of late, have really been taking lots of pictures with um, the iPhone. The iPhone's like my favorite. And with a switch of the screen, you can see the setup that um, you all have. And then I also uh, like to work with a three, 60 camera that fits onto my iPhone. And I work in with iPhone apps. I work uh, in Photoshop. This one was taken uh, at a place called Dinner en Blanc in the city uh, some, with uh, 5,000 of perfect strangers. We're all dressed in white and we're eating dinner. Dog named Peanut. Nothing is sacred. I do dogs. The work I do, I like to use uh, Photoshop and iPhone apps. Um, oftentimes I'll stitch several pictures together like this one. Uh, and I like to um, do work through the different uh, color channels, the red, blue, and green uh, of different objects and, and subjects and then blend them all together. This is a stairway Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. That's my studio. That's my work, and I look forward to seeing you at the uh, the during the tour, if it's for real, uh, or in person, <coughs> uh, or at the uh, Live for Art and uh, the virtual tour that is online. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Bill, for uh, telling us about that and sharing all those pictures with us. Next up is Tilly Strauss. Tilly is a daily painter and a writer who through her paintings and uh, work invites you into her life. Hi, Tilly. Hi, Lana. Thank you. Um, as an artist and a teacher and an art historian, I spend much of my time in the past and the future. So painting is a way that I ground myself in the present. And so I try to approach this discipline every day. The painting that um, you'll be seeing is of parakeets and it's from a series called 100 Things I Will Miss About Miami, where I was living for the last nine years um, before I returned to the area. And um, it's focused on the birds that would visit my um, apartment balcony. I tried to catch the joy of, the, of those visits in the painting and um, they occurred regularly, the visits, at like 5 p.m. each evening where I'd share a cocktail with them. For the Live for Art Gallery exhibition, I'm gonna be showing another painting from the same series, the same Miami series, and it's another view from my balcony, but with a very different sort of bird, my plastic flamingos. Um, I'm glad to have returned to this area after nine years away. I was one of the founding members of um, 14 years ago of Art East, and it's wonderful to be part of this thriving artist community again. Um, Lana is also a founding member, and she's our MC today. And Lana inspires us all with her photography and her community activism. So now back to you, Lana. Okay, thank you. I love mixing in enthusiastic crowds. The New York City Dance Parade, Dinner and Blanc, the Women's March, interacting with passionate people expressing their beliefs. But right now that's on hold. The art practice changed with COVID and um, I feel a need to connect with people to offer some kind of distraction to people. Um, growing out of my postcard project, Synergy has become a digital and international mail art project that asks people what's life like these days, living the time of COVID and inviting them to talk, create and to do it together. I've, I've gotten uh, work from all over the world, from Russia, from Japan, from Finland. So it's really pretty exciting for me to be receiving all that stuff in the mail. Um, 
on, on uh, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm a runner and on my solo running days, I document time photographing the same woods and trees and skies several times a week and watching as they change in the, um, with the seasons. So let me just ask, what's important to know about Art East? It's our 14th year of producing Open Studio Tour, which has really become a regional attraction. And it's a great way to visit artists in their studios for a glimpse of their practices and methods and to get to know them a little bit more. Our group show at the Live for Art Gallery on Charles Coleman Boulevard in Pauling, New York is open to the public from September 3rd to 27th from Thursday to Sunday and you'll find the hours, specific hours on our website. While you're in Pauling, you can check out the Art East artist banners that are along Charles Coleman Boulevard and Artia, our artist painted fiberglass turtle that's on the Village Green. Artia has become a hot spot for selfies. So while you're there, take a selfie and post it with hashtag Art East Open Studio to, to share it with us. You can get in touch with the artist through their page on artistduchess.com, which lists contact information and a curated selection of everybody's art. Open studio dates are October 17th, 18th, and 24th and 25th, two weekends from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It'll be a reduced number of studios this year due to the coronavirus, but the list of artists opening their studios will be available on the website by October 1st. We'll be posting a video, a 3D virtual gallery, and much more. Just a reminder that we ask you to respect CDC guidelines and to wear masks and maintain social distances. So thanks for watching. Get in touch with questions and comments at partystuchess.com. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks a lot, everybody, for being here today. So long. Thank you. Thank you.